Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. And Oscar De La Hoya has been finding a way to win ever since he kind of changed his attitude uh, towards his peers, his colleagues, um, and has hooked up with his uh, companion, Holly. See, seems that Oscar De La Hoya has been winning lately. Um, and, and what I'm telling you is he, he seems to be doing something right. It's easy to, to kind of target De La Hoya and make light of uh, the different situations that he's gone through. Uh, but no one questions uh, him and what he accomplished as a boxer. Uh, we all agree that De La Hoya was a bad boy. And uh, in any era, De La Hoya would have made some noise. But uh, Boxing Scene just published an article where they're kind of talking about De La Hoya and some of his plans for uh, Golden Boy uh, promotions and trying to expand the biz business in Las Vegas. And I thought it was pretty interesting because for a guy like De La Hoya who, at least to me, gives the impression that his company is struggling. Uh, you always hear the negative things like he's hands off. He doesn't know what's going on. He's always out partying. Maybe he's turned over a new leaf, uh, but nonetheless, he plans to set up shop in Las Vegas, where he was once the city's biggest draw, um, the Hall of Famer, former sixth division champion. This is all on BoxingScene.com. Um, and current chairman, chairman of Golden Boy Promotions, he plans to significantly invest his brand into local shows in Vegas. Um, some people feel, knowing that those were his intentions, that it's no surprise that uh, his team decided to open up 2024 with Virgil Ortiz against Frederick Lawson, uh, the zone headliner uh, right there at the Virgin Hotel in Las Vegas. Now, if you didn't see the fight last night, Virgil Ortiz, he was going to get the victory, right? Simple. He was going to win the fight. Uh, but referee Tony Weeks, uh, he just insert, inserted himself maybe a, a moment, a, a little bit prematurely. But nonetheless, Virgil Ortiz was going to get the win. Uh, but from that fight, what De La Hoya is hoping is to make a regular occurrence in Las Vegas uh, with Golden Boy branded shows. Now, he keeps talking about Holly, right? If you don't know who she is, you know, she's right there by his side for everything that he does. But they built a $14 million mansion in, uh, in Las Vegas. And that's where they're hosting media dinners and different things um, as they talk about the plans for Golden Boy promotions uh, going into this year and beyond. But he confirmed that he confirmed that there are plans in place to build a, a 2,500 to 3,000 square foot seat apex to host Golden Boy's more intimate shows. Uh, the construction's in progress and still a few months away from being completed. But that's where they want to make, you know, as far as Golden Boy headquarters, you know, right there at that spot. So it almost sounds like he's going to have Golden Boy headquarters. Um, embedded in this facility where they're going to host boxing events. Now that's interesting to me. But I guess we got to wait and see just how things develop. But an interesting point is more than half of De La Hoya's 45 career fights took place in Las Vegas, including 23 headliners and 22 world title fights, uh, where he ended up having an 18-4 record. All but two of his pay-per-view headliners were held in the long-proclaimed fight capital of the world, with those 19 events amassing well north of 13 minutes units sold and often in front of capacity crowds. Now, if you guys haven't gone and just pulled up the clips off of YouTube to see what De La Hoya's press conferences look like, uh, then you're doing yourself a disservice. De La, De, De La Hoya, he still is uh, kind of a rock star, but, but back when he was boxing, that, that man was a rock star. It was ridiculous. Uh, and the uniqueness of De La Hoya, he's the equivalent of what a lot of these guys are, like with the social media following. Back then, he had a master following uh, of just really a lot of women and men. Um, and, and if there was social media back then, though as big as he was, if there was social media back then, De La Hoya would have a billion followers. He would have had over a billion followers. Like, no kidding. That's just, that's just how much of a demand his, uh, his presence placed on fans and how much of an interest uh, he created with fans and just how much they loved De La Hoya. And it wasn't just the, the, the ladies. The men loved him too, okay? But uh, a chunk of Golden Boy's events, especially since the pandemic, have been staged either in Golden Boy's California home base or in Texas. Uh, they partnered with PBC last spring 
to present Javante Davis and Ryan Garcia um, at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Um, that night produced the highest grossing boxing event in 2023 20, uh, with more than $120 million in live gate and pay-per-view revenue. So when you look at this, $120 million in live gate and pay-per-view revenue. So when you look at those numbers, you know, you shouldn't be surprised that uh, Ryan Garcia uh, is looking at himself and what he brings to the table and Devin Haney and the fact that it's rumored Devin Haney only brought, in his last event, 30,000 pay-per-view sales. Let me tell you something. There's, 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 there's no comparison between Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney as far as marketability. But at the end of the day, you can't blame these guys for sitting here and, and, and saying, you know what, I recognize the belts you bring to the ring. I recognize what you've done as far as the, champ, the, the titles you've won and becoming undisputed. But that doesn't make you the A-side because at the end of the day, it all comes down to money. But Golden Boy's first two major shows of 2024 take place outside of California. Uh, Saturday's car was in Vegas while uh, there's a fight coming up on 27 Jan with Jaime Munguia facing John Ryder. Uh, and it will land at the Footprint Center home in the NBA uh, to the NBA Phoenix Suns. Now, I think this Jaime Munguia John Ryder fight, if Munguia gets past John Ryder, then Munguia has to go on and, and face. He's, he, he's got to face a Canelo. He's got to face a Benavides. Berlanga's not even on their level. But I would say, oh, Berlanga. He, he's got to face a big name. But Berlanga's not even on that level, in my opinion. But he, he, he's a name. He's Puerto Rican. Uh, and that's a good fight. But uh, while there remains to be plans to continue running shows in California, uh, which is the heart of Golden Boy's fan base because he's from Cali, the desire is to bring some of the magic surrounding De La Hoya's own career to a fight town that can use the action on a regular basis. And he even went on to say that when he started looking into Vegas, he was like, man, you know what, let's do something serious, something that's going to be impactful. Uh, not bringing boxing back, but help it grow and keep the momentum going. I mean, I, I, I like what he said there because this shit about bringing boxing back to Vegas, that's, come on now, Vegas has always been... Um, Boxing, you know, the boxing is Vegas. You know, the, the, there's an inextricable connection between Las Vegas and boxing. Then there's Las Vegas and gambling. Bottom line is boxing, Vegas, gambling brings big money. And big fights bring big money. Um, but we could see him trying to bring um, Ryan Garcia and Roly Romero right there to Vegas. Because um, Roly's out of Vegas. You know, and of course Mayweather is out there and uh, Al Heyman and everything's run out of Vegas. And then with De La Hoya and what he's looking to do. So if they can make the Garcia Roley Romero fight, I have no doubt that that would be right there uh, in, in Las Vegas. But he says the possibilities this year are endless. Um, and he, he, he's fought there many times and he's just like, look, he just wants to bring the best fight backs. And, and I'm going to tell you, the fact that he's still growing, he's still making changes. I know I, I can't peel the layers back on this. I can just go off what he's saying. But if he's making moves like this, obviously De La Hoya is doing something right. Um, and this isn't a video to, to poke at him and have fun. You know, sometimes we can have fun with content when we're creating content and having discussions. We're not always going to agree. But I can't see how anyone can sit here and hear what this man is trying to do and not at least see it as, hey, he, he's doing something right. But, um... Guess we just gotta wait and see if everything works out for him. It sounds good. It seems like the uh, <clears throat> the project completion date is probably probably the, the completion about 50% done. Another 50%, and then they'll be looking to to launch things, hopefully by mid or the end of the summer. But guess we just gotta wait and see, right? That being said, y'all keep cool. De La Hoya doing big things, uh, and let's 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 see if this kumbaya stuff that everybody's talking about and getting along and being happy and being in love. Let's see if these promoters can come together and make the biggest fights. Because at the end of the day, as much as I believe fighters should grab as much money as they can and get it the easiest way possible, that's me talking. That's not a hood champion. That's the individual I am. But then there's the, the boxing fan, the hood champion guy was like, I want to see the biggest and best fights. And maybe this is a step uh, in the right direction. Um, and maybe others will follow. We just have to wait and see. Y'all keep cool. I'm in the breeze.